In this column, I want to talk about coins and the strategic traceability of architecturally significant requirements. As some of you may recall, in my last column, I talked about the notion of using architecturally savvy personas to depict quality concerns as personalized, architecturally significant user stories, and then leveraging those user stories to drive a system's initial design. But as we all know, initial design is just the first step. A system is never static, and therefore its design often evolves, sometimes rather rapidly over time. This leads to the well-known problem of architectural degradation, which occurs when the architecture gradually and persistently drifts away from the original design. Continuing in that vein, I'll talk here about using traceability to help identify and monitor the critical sensitivity points of the design so that maintainers don't inadvertently degrade system qualities as they implement otherwise innocuous changes. Before I go further, I should explain that I realize that many consider traceability to be a dirty word. I get it. But please bear with me as I make my case for using traceability strategically to track how a system realizes and satisfies stakeholders' architecturally significant requirements over time. To set the stage, let's think about the kinds of things that are useful to trace. The way medieval architects designed and built their castles illustrates this idea beautifully. Coins were used at the corner junctions of two load-bearing walls to distribute weight and relieve pressure. Coins provided an architectural solution that satisfied pervasive requirements for a castle to not only endure potential erosion caused by weather conditions, but also to withstand enemy attack. After all, that was the main purpose of building the castle in the first place. These castles changed over time as they were expanded, modified, and reinforced. Change was slow. Key architectural decisions were frequently well understood and readily visible. Original architectural decisions were considered and often carefully preserved during construction and the reconstruction process. So why do we as requirements engineers and software architects care about coining? The reason is simple. Our software systems have their own coin equivalencies. Unlike medieval castles, which evolved slowly, software systems change quickly, sometimes almost continually. But because architectural decisions often aren't visible to developers, decay and rot set in. Consequently, the system qualities that are important to stakeholders gradually erode. We must identify and expose the system coins to the software developers who are responsible for maintaining the system. Software traceability presents a solution for tracking and exposing coins. Trace links can be established among key stakeholder concerns, architecturally significant requirements, important architectural decisions, and sections of code in which architectural decisions are implemented. This basic set of trace links means that developers working on sensitive areas of code can stay informed of underlying architectural decisions and their associated requirements. Placing this information at developers' fingertips doesn't inhibit them from making changes. However, it does equip them to make informed changes. Traceability must be strategically planned. Typically, it's neither cost-effective nor particularly valuable to trace every single requirement. In fact, such traceability would likely create an unmaintainable, brittle infrastructure underlying what should otherwise hopefully be a flexible design. Effective traceability must live and breathe along with the system that it supports. It mustn't prevent change from happening or make change more difficult but it should inform change by ensuring that developers understand underlying architectural decisions and their associated quality concerns during the change analysis process. Establishing trace links centered around architectural decisions contrasts with typical practice in which architectural decisions are captured as a simple list with no backward traceability explaining why the decisions were made or which particular quality goals they were designed to satisfy. Trace links can be captured in a simple table. For example, drawing from the case study from my previous column of Mechatronics traceability at the enterprise level, 
we might have a quality goal to achieve high performance transformed into a soft goal of fast trace query response time and the requirement that states when the user issues a trace query, results shall be returned in less than five seconds under normal operating conditions. To achieve this, we made two architectural decisions. The first is to cache previously baseline data in pre-process index form of the centralized trace engine. And the second is to return results incrementally by type. We document the rationales for these decisions. The first one is that pre-processing data is time consuming, but storing it in pre-processed form can reduce query time. And the second architectural decision to return results incrementally by type has the rationale that incremental delivery reduces the user wait time and the user will usually evaluate trace results type by type anyway. We then establish connections between each of the architectural decisions in the code. So we list, for example, the Java files that implement each of the architectural decisions. By creating and placing this information into a trace matrix, we're able to establish the traceability links all the way from the code back through the architectural decision to the rationale and also to the requirements, the soft goal and the quality concerns centered around it. Once trace links are created, they need to be made available to project stakeholders to support actual tasks. Imagine a scenario in which a developer starts modifying an architecturally sensitive part of the code and is informed of underlying architectural decisions, their rationales, and contributing requirements. The developer will receive useful information at the time of need and can implement a change without inadvertently degrading the quality of the architectural design. Unfortunately, one of the greatest inhibitors of cost-effective traceability in practice stems from our lack of useful cross-lifecycle tool support, especially when requirements, design, and code are managed across different tools and environments. We need to address this challenge by creating better traceability tools, especially those tools that operate seamlessly across the requirements management design and implementation environments. By creating strategic trace links supported by effective tooling, we can place useful information at our developers' fingertips to help preserve architectural qualities and ensure that a system not only initially satisfies, but continues to satisfy its stakeholders' quality concerns. As always, I would love to hear your views and perspectives on this topic. Please feel free to send me an email at jhuang.cs.depaul.com dot edu so we can chat about this further.